Hey guys, it's your boy Jack Gay, and once again I have scoured the interwebs to bring you another every easter egg video, and this time it's on High on Life. Now keep in mind this game has a lot of direct references, or references that are just very obvious, and in my mind these references are not easter eggs, because easter eggs have to be somewhat secretive and not so direct. So to give you an example, during a main quest, you'll enter an Applebee's restaurant. And obviously Applebee's is a real American restaurant, so it's a direct obvious reference that everyone's going to come across when you play the game. You can't miss it. And there's plenty more obvious direct references. Also keep in mind that this is all of the Easter eggs that have been found so far, and more Easter eggs may be found in the future. Alright, well let's get into it by starting off with my favourite Easter egg, which is the secret secret ending easter egg. Now I assume that if you're looking up easter egg videos you understand that there could be spoilers in them right? I think that's pretty obvious. So after you beat the game if you go back to Clug's office you'll find something on his desk. You just grabbed that key card huh? I mean listen no judgments here you know we do, who knows what that thing can do. So now you have a key card, go back to the human haven, or is it pronounced haven? I don't even know. And once you're there, you can actually climb all the way up to the top of it until you see a secret door. Hey, that key card you stole from Clug. Okay, it's open. L -l 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 Let's see where this goes. Are you getting the weird uneasy kind of vibes like I am? Fuck yeah! We're going deeper! Oh shit! This is a room full of dead humans! Fuck! Jesus! So the human haven was just a place to experiment on humans. This place keeps going on and on. Clug? Oh, you backstabbing sack of shit! Oh, fuck the bounty hunter! How did they get here? Hey, dipshit! Chase the backstabbing politician! Please stop chasing me! Yeah, fat chance, dick! We're gonna chase the hell out of you! Clug, you didn't foolishly lead an interloper directly to us, did you? I, uh, uh... Ha, ha. I ask only as a formality. I already know the disappointing answer. I'm sorry, human, but this is what I thought was best for the cosmos. You just don't under... Now the question is, what do we do with you? You're the bounty hunter Clug manipulated into wiping out the G3, correct? We... Enough. Again, I already know the answer. Well, I'm interested. You're human. I have a very specific interest in humans. Would you mind if I cut you open and took a look inside? No way, you creep. What the hell is this place? Oh, my apologies. I'm Dr. Gurgula. Maybe you've heard of me. I'm sure your Gatlian friends have. I'm responsible for the plague that wiped out their entire race. Nothing personal, of course. I simply thought that they might be the key to my research. And when they weren't, well, what did it matter to me? What happened to them? Oh, you're like seriously evil. Psychopath evil. I'm a scientist. And I'm going to be the first being in existence to unlock the secrets of the universe. You, human. Did you know your species has a very unique brain structure? And do you have the slightest inkling as to what it means? No, of course not. Therein lies the irony. Your special little brains hold a million wonderful secrets, and yet you can't even comprehend of them yourself. Much like a jar, unable to fathom its own contents. You'll forgive me for breaking the jar to get at what's inside, won't you? Newsflash, fucko! We're not letting you get away with this! Oh, yes, you are. And I can't allow any amount of my work here to be compromised. I hit the kill switch and wiped all my data the second I detected your presence back here. Good thing I've already gotten what I need. And as for you, well... 
I heard you already did your part in stopping Gamantuous and the G3. Well done, Bounty Hunter. You humans really do continue to impress me. Please watch your step on the way out. These experiments are very delicate. Okay, shit. That's a lot. That was a fucking lot. Maybe it'll get addressed in the sequel? fucking guys again. Hey there, Slim. That you didn't expect to see us. Looks like you figured out our dad, Klug, wasn't such a goody two-shoes after all. That'd teach you not to trust politicians. Not like you had a choice. Not like we had a choice either. That's right, kid. We're on your side for real. We hated that pompous yellow jagoff, but you? We like you. You've got Moxie, kid. We love Moxie. And now that Klug's out of the picture, we went ahead and did you the favor of rounding up all your little friends here. Don't worry. We're taking care of them. That's a promise. We're straight shooters. That means we don't shoot crooked. We'll make sure everyone's safe and sound. Not a hair on their heads harmed. You get that cute little planet of yours back up and running. Then we'll help you send everyone back home. No need to thank us. We just want to help. And we love how much moxie you got. We really do love that moxie. Take care, kid. Congrats on finding this whole secret part of the game. And thanks for cleaning up the trash. Yeah. This is too much for me. Let's just head home. Well, that Easter egg took a lot longer than I thought it would, Jesus. But it's still very cool, right? The next Easter egg is during the Douglas bounty, and it's where you can actually kill Douglas before the boss fight. And the way that this scene is triggered is you need Gus out during the pipe scenes where you're talking to Douglas, because he's a lot smarter than your other Gatlin, Kenny, so he'll actually pick up on something. God, my poor family, my wife, Plimmy, my kids, Swoopy and Froopy. <gasps> I'm gonna get to see them soon. Can you help me out one last time? Sure thing, buddy. Oh, huzzah! Plimmy, Froopy, Sloopy, here I come. Maybe I'm tripping, but I could have sworn your second kid's name was Swoopy. Yeah, that's what I said. Plimmy, Froopy, and Swoopy, here I come. You're halfway there. Keep going, you can do it. Oh, I can't wait to see my little Flimmy, Proppy, and Droopy. Oh, okay, okay, see, that's it. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend no more. You slipped up again. You keep changing your kids' damn names. What, 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 what's happening? What's really happening? What's popping? What's cracking, baby? <laughs> what? What are you, what are you talking about? Are you fucking with us? Fucking with you? I, oh, oh, you're wrong. I would never do that. Look how vulnerable I am right now. If I was lying, would I make myself so vulnerable? Shoot his ass. Trust Wait. me. Wait, hold on a second. Oh, bro, I, I don't know He's what... lying. He's fucking lying to our faces. Just do it. Shoot his ass. No, don't do it. Just solve the puzzle, please. For me, just like old times. Ah, what the... Damn you, you idiots. How did you... Fuck. Gotta get to my suit. Yes, smart ass. We figured this shit out, too. We're smart, too. You're Douglas. Uh, yeah, yep. No, I, I knew it all along, too. I... I... <laughs> who killed Krubus, aren't you? I can't believe you idiots figured me out. Dead Douglas detected. Autopilot activated. Entering chaos mode. I thought we killed this dude already! Not his dead body! Is in a fucking robot suit? Still fucking fighting? Still resisting? What the fuck is happening around here? What's happening in this fucking game? Initiating What's me, man? 
Fuck you, Honestly, bounty hunter. I've got it like that. And there you have it. So you technically killed Douglas, but then you have to fight his suit anyway. <laughs> it's a very cool detail that I would have completely missed because I had Kenny out when I first did my playthrough. So yeah, very cool. My next favorite Easter egg is right at the start of the game when you boot the game up and you're playing that arcade retro style game. There's actually a secret trap room that you can find. So when you enter that final big room, you can go into a room to the left and you pick up this yellow thing. It acts as like a key. Then you go down the ramp and you'll find the trap room and then once you're in the room There is a dead body. There's f you all over the walls and then the room actually traps you in there So you can't get out. Let me know if this dead body is like a reference to anything like doom or anything like that I feel like it should be a reference to something but no one said anything yet Next up is the secret binary code Easter egg This is during the Krubus bounty when you're searching for the sacred grounds warp disk Now the only way to do this is to actually find the warp disk And then once you're about to leave the building is when you can actually make a turn and go down this way to a secret pipe and there will be the binary code and once you translate this binary code it actually says hello the next one is the QR code Easter egg now it probably depends what order of bounties you're playing but I came across this scene once I did the Grendel Rose bounty, I can't even bloody pronounce it. And it's where Twig is eating cereal out of the box. And once he lifts up the box, you can get close enough to it to actually scan it with your phone. And when I scanned it, it took me to the game developer's official website. So it's not like a special website or anything, but it's still a cool little detail that they've added to the game. Next up is the answering the phone Easter egg. So in between each bounty, you can actually answer the phone in the city and there will be something different each time. Each phone call is is pretty long and I have decided to play them all for you so good thing I put this video in chapters if you do want to skip through hello hi is this Slippo's pizza I want a pizza now I want it right now do you get me not in 30 minutes or less or whatever I need it instantaneous and I know we have the tech for that why are you still delivering pizza by foot just zap them to me there's like 10 different ways you can do it by now portal door warp base anything I don't care just get it to me right now wait never mind I'm not hungry bye hello who's there Are you trying to prank call me okay good work you got me I don't give a shit you think I care about getting pranked Okay, fuck you! I've got powerful friends. I know a really strong bounty hunter, and I'm gonna send him to kick your ass! How do you like that, huh? Hello? Who is this? If this is Nancy from the city comptroller, I actually would like to speak to you. Is this Nancy? Well, I'll tell you what, if it is or isn't, maybe you can pass on the message to Nancy because I'm not sure if you're aware, but on my block on 67 Rosebud, well, the Rosebud Avenue between uh, Terrace uh, Court and uh, Jarvis Street, in that, in that area, I have a pool in the back of my yard. It's a saltwater pool, and the neighborhood boys, they come around on their fucking BMX bikes, and they, they ride all over my, my, my rose garden, but that's not the, where it ends, is they take the little rocks and the little pieces of fertilizer and soil from my garden, and they throw it into my fucking pool, and all those goddamn little rocks, they get into the filter, and I gotta change that thing out every single time they do it. And those filters are about $700. So, I don't know if that's part of your jurisdiction, but maybe could you get somebody out here to figure that fucking shit out, otherwise I'm gonna have to take matters into my own hands. And I've killed before. Now legally it was under, um, it was in war, I have been, I have served, but I know what it's like to take a life. And I will do it to the children, or at least their fucking parents, because I'm out $1,400, and if you can't do the math, Nancy, that's two fucking filters. So if you'd get back to me as soon as you can, or, 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 or I guess if you can pass this on to Nancy, just let me know and I'll figure it out. And if it's one of your little shits crank calling me, I'm gonna take matters into my own hands. You just wait.
sorry guys, but there is a 99% chance that YouTube will copyright me if I play this song. But the song is called Quezo and Toast, if I'm pronouncing that right. I generally do not pronounce things correctly. And it's by the artist Morris Boris. And this song is very cool. I really enjoyed it. You should probably go check it out. Has there ever been a bearing like queso, queso and toast? All right, that's all the risk that I'm willing to try, all right? Be thankful for my risk. And as you can see, when I went back, nothing happened. Let me know if you have tried to go back again and if there is actually more. Hopefully there's not because I don't want to miss anything, but I don't want to have to play through the entire game again if I don't have to, you know what I mean? Next up, we have the waiting one hour Easter egg. So during the Douglas bounty, you come across the cinema room where Douglas says this. Congratulations, shitheads. So you made it past the first training exercise. Big deal. That one was easy. We lied and said it was hard to scare you. Oh, it's fun to freak you out, to fuck with your heads. Now get ready for exercise two. It starts at one hour. That's right, you have to wait a full hour. We're testing your resolve. So just stand there patiently and wait. Then this door will open and you can continue. Uh, okay, there's no way we're waiting a full hour. So there you have it, he says wait one hour. But if you look around, what you're actually supposed to do is actually go through the cage in the back corner. Bounty hunter, please, for fuck's sake. Okay, thank God. Okay, let, let's ditch this whole recruiting bullshit thing. However, if you do decide to wait one hour, then you will come across this. All right, that was 15 minutes. Good work so far. You're really proving your endurance. Just keep sitting here waiting. That's the only thing you can do here. No other options. Wow, 30 minutes, pretty good. You're really in this for the long haul, yeah? Well, it doesn't impress me. This isn't hard to do. It's just waiting. Anyone can wait. 45 minutes, you're almost done. I'd give you some words of encouragement, but I really just don't care at all. Doesn't matter to me if you make it or not. You're not important to me. Okay, good work. You waited an hour. whoop de doo Congratulations on having resolve. We are so proud of you for being able to wait and do nothing for an hour. Just sit on your ass for 60 minutes. What an achievement. Kudos to you. Hope you felt like that was worth your time. Hope you and your ass got some enjoyment out of that. Anyway, here we go. Door opening now. Hello again. If you're seeing this video, it means the door got stuck. So we're sending a guy to fix it. He'll be there in a week or whatever, when he's available. Just sit tight. There's enough air in there, I promise. But there isn't enough food. So enjoy starving to death. Here's some TV in the meantime. <laughs> And there you go. I think it was worth the wait for that secretive juicy dialogue. What do you guys think? The next Easter egg is how Clug's kids are actually watching you throughout the game. So when you go to Clug's office with his kids there, if you talk to his kids, they'll say this. You know, we've been tailing you for a while. Next time you play the game, look for us. You won't see us unless we want you to because we're in stealth mode. Know what that means? So I went back through my footage and during the Dr. Giblet's bounty where you're talking to the Blim residents, you can actually see the brothers on the other side of the fence. And when you get close to them, they just disappear into the abyss. But that's not all. If you progress through the mission a little bit more, your next objective will be head to the slums. And then if you go where I go, you will find a container where the brothers have seemingly teleported to. And you can go around this container, they will follow you wherever you're standing. It's a bit creepy, but it's not really clear if this is an Easter egg or if it's just game developers just chucked them in there and forgot about them. <laughs> and I'm also not sure if they pop up around the game anywhere else. Maybe you've seen them, let us know down below. Now, Fergals pop up all around this game, but there was one in particular that kind of stands out as why the heck is this Fergal here? So in Blim City, next to the pawn, shop if you go where I go you will see a Fergal down an alley that you cannot go down it just felt like it was worth mentioning in this video because it was just so odd to me so Squanch Games made this game, if that's how you pronounce it, I don't even know. And they also made another game called Trova Saves the Universe. 
Uh, back to you in the studio, Chuck. Fuck you. I don't give a shit. Ahem. <clears throat> Sorry about that, folks. And you can actually find some references to that game. So if you walk in the cinema, you'll see a poster that says Trover Saves the Universe, and that is the game. And also in the pawn shop, you'll see the Crystal of Ithicles. Again, if that's how you pronounce it, which is also from that game. So a couple cool little references there. You must find the Crystal of Ithicles. Partner, we gotta find the Crystal of Ithicles. I have the Crystal of Ithicles right here. Okay, my bad. It is Ithicles. <laughs> Ithicles. Anyway, let's move on to some video game references. The first one being an Angry Birds reference. <laughs> I'm sure you all played Angry Birds on your phone at one point and if you didn't then you're just super young probably. So in the slums I always wondered why there were all these stuffed birds around the place. But if you go to one particular spot, you'll see a spot where you can actually slingshot yourself and you can see a bunch of birds laying in the water and then you'll see a chest with the birds sitting on it as well. It's all set up just like how Angry Birds is when you slingshot them. And notice how the bird on the chest is green, just like the green piggies in the game. The next video game reference is a dialogue reference. And it is pretty direct and obvious, but if you have the wrong gun out at that time, then I guess you can miss the dialogue. So that's why I'm including it. So this one is also during the Douglas bounty, but instead of Gus, you want Kenny out. And it's right where you get to the first obstacle course. Okay, you know what? It looks like some simple platforming, you know, like what you'd see in like Lucky's I'm Tale, I'm really on, uh, you know, or um, you know that one uh, that one game that we that we all know I'm and love, really Mario doing. Land or whatever. So there you go. He talks about Mario Land and Lucky's Tale, two video games that I have never played. This next one is also Kenny talking about video games, and you get this dialogue if you go back to Old Town because it doesn't happen the first time, but if you go back there and you take the lift that takes you to Dregtown, you'll get this dialogue. Oh boy, a big sideways elevator, original. You know, they, they had one of these in Akira. And I think Evangelion, you ever see those? Anime exists in space, you know. Did I tell you that already about anime? Space people love anime. We, you know, we love all anime. It's considered taboo not to like anime in space. We even like that show Code Lyoko. You know that Cartoon Network show from like 20 years ago that kind of looked like uh, anime except everyone had huge foreheads for some reason? Yeah, we liked it. You know what else had an elevator like this? I think Final Fantasy VII. Definitely, I think Chrono Trigger, Resident Evil 2. You remember those games? You you probably don't know them. We only have them here in space. They're space games. I bet there's no Earth equivalent at all. Well, I guess I forgot to mention that it's also an anime reference. <laughs> the next video game reference is when you start a new game, you'll first see this slogan saying, winners don't use drugs. And this slogan was actually used on arcade machines from 1989 to 2000. So a nice little quick reference there. And then finally, very quickly, just wanted to mention at the start of the game when you're playing that retro game and you get the green night vision goggles, it's obviously a reference to Splinter Cell. Probably not even worth me mentioning that. I'm sure everyone picked up on that. Anyway, let's move on to movie and TV show references. So this next one is an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie called Total Recall. And so whenever you use the Bounty 5000 machine, you put your hand in it with two fingers touching because there's one less finger slot. And that's exactly what Arnold Schwarzenegger had to do as well, but in a slightly different manner, but it looks like a reference. Next up is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference. And this one is in Clug's office. You'll see a photo of someone who looks awfully familiar. I actually don't know which color that is. Is that the purple dude? I might need some help on some turtle identification here. The next Easter egg is a Breaking Bad reference. And it's from the famous scene where the pizza ends up on the roof. <laughs> Now everyone's talking about the pizza that's in Blim City, but after I show you this one, there's actually a better spot, which I will show you. Anyway, doing the Blim City one first, if you go where I go, you will of course see a pizza on a roof. And you know, whenever you see a pizza on the roof, people are just automatically like, oh my God, it's a Breaking Bad reference. This I don't feel is really a reference because it's not on the tile roof of a house. However, once you beat the game and you go on top of your roof, you 
you will actually see a pizza there. Now this, I would definitely say, is a Breaking Bad reference. No doubt. It's on the tile roof. It looks pretty bloody similar. Anyway, while we're here, I just noticed that there's three graves in your backyard once you beat the game. Can anyone explain to me what the f*** that's a reference to? I have no idea. Next up is a Simpsons reference. Now we all know that Homer Simpson works in the power plant with radioactive material, right? Poor guy, living at the plant. And yet he's still late. And in the slums, it's a pretty similar environment. Like the water is all contaminated and shit. You assume that it's all radioactive. Anyway, you will see a sign which looks like, you know, radioactive material. And you'll see Homer's face. So it looks like a pretty clear reference to me. And then you can also see Homer's face in Blim City. I think here it's like a sign just outside of like a bar or something. So this probably means like no alcoholics allowed or something maybe. That, that's kind of the gist that I got from it what do you guys think next up people are calling the sandworm an easter egg again i probably disagree with this i don't see the resemblance to like the dune sandworm and i don't see any resemblance to anything in star wars let me know if i'm wrong maybe my research is not good but here's the sandworm anyway in the outskirts Alright, now to finish off these movie and TV show references, we need to look at some of the posters in the game. Now there are an absolute ton of posters in your bedroom and there's some in the cinema that you can unlock. There's also the few in the lounge room that get unlocked as you progress through the game and they're just referencing the movies that Gene actually watches on the TV. I wouldn't really call them easter eggs because they're not very secretive, everyone's going to come across them and watch the movies, but I'll mention them anyway. So you've got Tam me and the T-Rex, my personal favorite for no particular reason at all, Blood Harvest. <laughs> oh yes! Yeah. Vampire hookers? Sounds good on paper, less impressive on the screen. And then there's Demon Wind, which is actually the movie that you can watch in the cinema. Now let's move to the bedroom. I personally don't know the reference to each and every single one of the posters, but let's go through some of them. I'm sure I can piece together some, right? So I'm thinking Meet the Fart Bags could be a reference to Meet the Fockers. And then you've got Toy Glory, which is obviously Toy Story. Even the font of the title is the same. Hot Dog Time Machine, a reference to Hot Tub Time Machine. People are saying that this one, Cornhole Man, looks like he's out of Beavis and Butthead, something I've never watched. Super Fat McDoomed, I don't know if it's off of a movie, but it certainly sounds like a McDonald's reference. Nintendo Bro, Game Bro. So that 100% has to be Nintendo Game Boy reference. So I guess they're not all movies and that's all of the ones that I could understand. Let me know down below if you understand more of them. We're definitely nearing the end of our easter egg hunt but I can't make this video without mentioning the amount of secret dialogue in this game is ridiculous. Not necessarily secret dialogue, but just dialogue in general. If you do certain things, have a certain gun out, there is just so much dialogue that you are definitely going to miss on your first, second, third run of the campaign. So I'm just going to mention two bits of dialogue that we haven't already that I feel like definitely deserve to be mentioned. So the first one is when you first pick up Kenny and he's asking you to shoot. If you don't shoot your gun and then you pause the game and when you unpause it, he will say this. What the fuck? You just paused the game. This doesn't help at all. Are you an idiot? Everyone knows pause button. In what fucking game is the pause button shoot? Now I know I said that I was only going to show you two dialogues, but let me show you a little extra one here that I accidentally found when I was just having a look around. And it takes place just after that Kenny pause button scene. You're supposed to go up to the middle base and just go in there and do the mission. But if you go to one side and then the other, you'll get a special piece of dialogue. So you'll see here, I go to the right base first, it's blocked off. I go to the left base next, which is also blocked off. And then he'll say this. 
Oh, fuck, this space is blocked too. Maybe that one that was really obviously like laid out perfectly, like right in the dead center for you to go to. Maybe that's the one we gotta go to, you know? Do you ever think of that? Now, this is what I mean when I was talking about this game has a ton of dialogue if you do certain things. That's just one of the many examples. The other secret dialogue that I wanted to show you was the dialogue when the game thinks that you're cheating. So you don't have to be cheating, but if you enter an area earlier than what you're meant to enter it, then you you will get that secret cheating dialogue. I'll just do like a speed run for you guys, just in case you guys want to see how I did it. And I do this run in the slums and when I unlock the dodging ability, but normally you would only go down this path once you have the jetpack as well. Okay, you cheated. I know you cheated there. You weren't supposed to do it that way, but that's fine. We, we encourage the player to do whatever they want, that's okay. We, we're not gonna dock you points for that. Now that's actually just one of the many cheating dialogues that you might get, but because I got stuck here just to get this dialogue and had to restart, there's no way that I'm gonna put in the time to get more of those dialogues. And I also would not recommend that you do this because if you get stuck, you're gonna be kicking yourself, right? All right, well, we're up to the last thing on my little list here, and that is the astronomer. Now, I only know two locations where the astronomer shows up. There could be more, let me know, of course, but the astronomer doesn't show up when you first go to a location. He only shows up when you return there. So this first location is in the deep jungle and I accidentally found it when I wasn't even trying to record Easter eggs. So the footage might not be great, but let's have a look. Come one, come all, come marvel at the mysteries of the cosmos. Decided to take a look, have we? How fortuitous. Before you lies the mythical Zephyr Star Whale. Some say this mythical being pollinated the land with its mighty star whale seed, which supposedly gave way to all life on Zephyr. That's the myth, but I know the truth. An old guy named Stephen did it. He just jizzed everywhere a few thousand years ago and sort of just uh, became a god for this planet, I guess. The progenitor of all Zephyr life, including mites, fergals, and moplets. So good for Stephen. All hail Stephen. Ah, just thinking about him makes me all misty-eyed. The next location is just outside of Old Town in the Wastelands. And you'll probably notice when I'm looking at the stars, I'm moving a lot because I can't even find the stars that he's talking about. <laughs> so my bad. Come one, come all, come marvel at the mysteries of the cosmos. Ah. So you do have a taste for the cosmos. What do you see? Look close, my friend, and you may spot shining brightly the three distant dog stars of Terrine. We call them the dog stars because the founders of Port Terrine launched one dog into each star as a sort of, well, we don't really know why they did it. We just know that they did it. In fact, we all wish they didn't, but they did. And now it's the easiest way to spot the constellation that unites them all. Giant's Grundle. We didn't know what Grundle meant when we named it. Now it's too late. Everyone calls it Giant's Grundle, and they don't want to change it. It's too hard to remember a new name, but I suppose they're right. But look at all of its beauty. I can gaze upon it for eons. And I don't believe it. Our Easter egg hunt has come to an end. If I did somehow miss anything, make me sad and let me know below. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. My every Easter egg videos are very time consuming, but I do enjoy making them. They are good fun. So a massive thank you if you have watched this far. Any support that you leave on the video is much appreciated. And on your left, you should see a video that YouTube's recommending for you. And on your right, I will leave my every Easter egg playlist in case you want to look at some more every Easter egg videos I've done. And on that note, I'll see you in the next one.